What's up guys? Four wheeler doctor back again. Uh, wet day in South Carolina today. But uh, I managed to get this 2011 Big Red. Um, I think this is uh, 700 into the shop. And uh, it is smoking worse than I've seen one smoke in quite a while. So uh, I'm going to pull the motor out of it. Uh, looked around online, didn't really see where anybody had had any videos about how to pull, pull them out of these things. Uh, I think the motor is pretty much the same as the Rencon. I've got some videos out there and I'll, I'll put some links to them up top of um, how to get the motor or how to take the motors apart. Pretty much the same thing except for the um, except for the cylinder size on these I believe. So um, let me start taking this thing apart. We'll see about getting the motor out. It's uh, located right in this area here so definitely gonna have to take a bunch of stuff out from under the seats and all that stuff. Uh, it's probably going to be our first order of business is getting the seat out and um, removing these. Um, well, that little plastic or rubber piece goes over this part, but uh, removing this cover here and maybe uh, taking these seat brackets out. I'm going to have to see. We're just going to tear in there and see what we got to do to get the thing out of there. All right, I'll cut the camera back on in a sec when I get a few parts off and let you know what I've done. Alright guys, first thing I'm going to do is take the uh, the seat bolts out. It's three bolts, one, two, three on each side. Uh, removes the back seat brackets here. Uh, see the holes there? And then go around and take all these uh, Phillips head screws out. Um, I'm not sure if you got to take the ones out the center there, but take them all out all the way around. And then you can pull this plastic cover off and expose the top of the motor. And I'm going to get this cover out of there too. Alright, so there you go. Now we got the top of the motor here. It looks like I may just don't give us a whole lot of room to work in here. So um, I'm going to figure out my game plan as to what I, how I want to get this thing out of here. Because it don't look like there's enough room between these two braces here to pull it out pull it out the top so it may have to come in from the back side but let me uh, let me get in there a little bit deeper and I'll figure out our best method of attack on this because I've done a number of these uh, well motors like this but never done one on a big red so this is gonna be a learning experience for both of us all right let me uh, let me tilt this bed back and see what we can expose back there. Alright guys, I took this uh, black plastic cover piece off uh, right here. Just some push pins that hold it on. Um, from what I can tell, this looks like it's going to be a fun one. Uh, got to unbolt this cross member here. Bolts here, bolts here. Unbolt this cover here. And I guess unhook these. This is the emergency brake lines. or parking brake whatever you want to call it get all that stuff out of the way and if we do that it should open this up enough that we can get the motor lifted up out of there I know I got to un uh, unbolt all the engine mounts and all that stuff but at least this will open this area up so we can at least get it out of this hole because there's no other way to get it out so um, it kind of makes sense that they broke the roll cage here so that you could get it out. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'll start off by unbolting these two, those two on that side. And um, these, there's two bolts here on each side too that bolt it down to the frame. And then I'll get these brake lines loose both here and here. Probably just pull, try to pull this whole brake mechanism out of here if I can somehow or another and get all that out of the way so open open this area up I'll cut the camera back on in a sec when I get um, get all this unbolted and show you what the next step is alright guys I got the brace out of there there was one little uh, snap here that you had to take off to get um, get the whole brace out and I just laid the uh, brake cables back up through here and had to lo loosen this 14 millimeter uh, nut here off on the parking brake um, Alright, next thing I think I'm going to do 
I believe just to get a little bit more room in this thing, I'm going to pull this plate off here too. It's got a, a two bolts here on the top, two bolts down on the bottom. To get to that, I'm going to have to remove this front cover. It's just got these uh, regular old rivets in it. And then I'm going to take this plate off too. Uh, once you get all that off, it's going to open this thing up to look almost like an ATV. Um, so then it'll be just about like pulling one out of there. You've got a, a top motor mount bolt. You have two bottom motor mount bolts. Um, I'm not sure what the drive shafts do in this case. On um, the Rencons, you normally have to loosen the front differential up and slide that drive shaft forward to get the um, to get the drive shaft loose from the motor. I'm not sure how that works in this case. I'll figure it out once I get to that point. But uh, right now I'm going to take this plate off, this plate off, this front cover, and uh, open this whole area up here to uh, to get ready to pull the motor out. All right, guys. I couldn't take this whole, well, I probably could, but I didn't uh, take this whole cover off here because this is actually part of the floorboard, uh, I believe. So I just un unhooked the a few of the clips on the two top clips on it. Got it to lay back enough to get the bolts out of this uh, parking brake bracket. You got two bolts at the bottom and two nuts at the top. Those are all 12 millimeter. Also have to unplug this parking brake wire and unclip this little uh, that's the throttle cable there off of this clip here. Uh, I had the time getting these bolts out. They were pretty tight. Ended up having to heat them up a little bit. They came right out after I heated them. But okay, so now. With those two plates, plates removed, you can see it really opens it up. Uh, starting to look more like a, what you would see when you remove one of these out of a Rencon. Or, um, so what I need to do now, uh, I'm just going to start working from the top down like I do on most of these. I'm going to unbolt this air box back at the very back, those two bolts out of it. Uh, loosen this clamp up here to let the air box and the uh, throttle body slide back and so that would disconnect that part also going to um, remove this these two 12 millimeter bolts on the exhaust and I need to drain the coolant out of this thing too I got to figure out the best way to do that so uh, let me figure out where the where the drain is for it and I'm gonna probably go ahead and pop the um, pop the drain plug out of the oil too to go ahead and let the oil start draining and uh, all right, I'll cut the camera back on when I get a little more progress. All right, guys, I got the taking the air box off of this thing. It actually has got three bolts, three 10 millimeter bolts, and I also had to loosen up um, a couple bolts and a and a um, rivet on this uh, intake snorkel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you got a bolt there, a bolt here, under there, and then one bolt right here. And that lets your snorkel wobble around so you can get it out of the air box. Uh, I didn't loosen the clamp up on that boot on the air box. And uh, it appears it wasn't even on the throttle body. You can see inside the throttle body there. It is very, very dusty. And I think the boot had worked its way off of this throttle body. And um, it was just sucking sand and dust and stuff up in there not even going through the filter now the filter doesn't look real good either but um i think that's what the whole problem was the the boot had come off of here and um was had ended up sucking a lot of uh a lot of silt you can even see it here you can kind of see there where it looks like the that's where the throttle body was riding on that boot uh, and it just wasn't on there i didn't even loosen that clamp up like i say in the and the air box came right off. So that's what caused this thing to smoke like this. Get a bunch of sand and stuff through the motor so it just probably chewed the rings up. Just hoping the crank's still good in it. Uh, this guy's has been run under water a few times anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and tear it completely down to clean the inside out. But that's uh, that's what the root of the problem is. They use this on a construction site too so it just gets uh, ridden around in the dust pretty much all day long all right so uh i still have to figure out where to drain the coolant out of this thing i'm gonna do that next i'll cut the camera back on when i get it figured out all right guys the coolant drain on this one's just like the one on the Incon. um down here on the front of the engine where the water pump is there is a bolt 
a 10 millimeter bolt. It's got a little tab beside it, and I'm not real sure what that purpose of that tab is, but that's how you can distinguish it from any of the other bolts. It goes in this hole right here. See where the that's where the um, coolant line comes in, and there's the little tab I was speaking of. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. You take that bolt out. What I usually do is take a little bendy uh, funnel, put it on there, and let it drain out into a pan below. Uh, the thing will shoot uh, cooling out for a little bit then it'll stop you can take the uh, radiator cap off and it'll shoot some more out and then you can also remove this breather nut or bolt right here and set it right over top of the thermostat on the engine and that'll um, let even more coolant come out so just do all those things until it's barely coming out or just barely dripping you can stick your bolt in there to keep from making a mess all over the floor but um all right, so you, the coolant side of it now. So now what I'm going to do is start taking some of these coolant lines off. Uh, you got the one here on the top, the one here at the front, and um, the one down there at the bottom that I also just showed you a minute ago. Uh, that's the; those are the three coolant lines you have to take off. And uh, I'll cut the camera back on in a sec when I get all those uh, get all those unhooked. All right, guys, I got the um, coolant lines off. Now I'm going to have to remove this cover here for the shift solenoid, just three um, 10 millimeter bolts and that should get it out to where you can um, unbolt the, or just unplug the uh, shift solenoid wires. Uh, also another thing I need to do is take this the shifter loose back here, which is right down in here. The shifter as well as there's two bolts on the cable right here that they need to come loose too so um, it's not hooked to the motor anymore so I'll get those two done and cut the camera back on guys one other thing when you go to take your um, shifter off you might want to mark where the crack is on the shifter just so you can get it lined back up right and I always try to make sure I keep the thing in neutral um, that way when you put it back together you make sure you keep the motor in neutral and that'll help your shifter line up alright next thing to do is uh, I got the um, plugs pulled off of the shift solenoids. Um, this has got a little bit different setup than the than the ATVs. This has got a, an oil cooler on it that actually runs coolant through it. Um, there's a few hoses and things that are hooked to it. What I'm going to do right now just to make it a little easier to get this thing out is just unbolt this whole cooler. It's um, two 10 millimeter bolts and leave all the hoses attached um, with the exception of the the one that was already hooked to the motor up here and I'm going to unhook this clip on this one here um, just so we can get it out of the bike but I should be able to lay that cooler over onto the motor and just pull all that out at one time then I can deal with unhooking it once I get it out of the bike um, so I'm going to take that off I've got to unbolt the starter which is right here 10 millimeter bolt uh, it's got a little flap over it I'm going to go ahead and loosen this motor mount up uh, actually remove it completely the 14 millimeter bolts as well as the two 12s that are stuck in the side and I think what I'm going to do with the drive shaft is uh, unbolt that rear diff which there's two bolts one here and one there and um, the diff should slide backwards and I could get the drive shaft off if I could get it to do that then I can get the front shaft off and then pull the whole motor out uh, without having to mess with that front drive shaft alright I'll cut the camera back on in a sec all right, guys, got the oil cooler loose, got the back, uh, the starter unbolted. Uh, now, the only thing remaining is to unhook these two um, connectors here. The big one and the small one, they go back to the back of the motor here. Uh, also, this uh, ground 10 millimeter bolt here. And I'm, then I'll be, I'm going to loose or take the differential loose. I hadn't done that yet. And go ahead and unbolt these motor mounts. The motor mount on this side looks like it's pretty easy. This is on the driver's side. The other side, you can barely even see the thing. So I'm hoping it will be able to get up from the bottom and get to it. Um, but I don't know. It's it's going to be tough otherwise because the gas tank's right over there and all that. So let me uh, get get these loosened up, get those uh, connectors off, and do the rear diff to get the drive shaft loose. And I'll cut the camera back on in a second. Alright folks, I got the uh, differential unbolted and slid back and it's it'll slide back and far enough to get the drive shaft out kind of like I was hoping it would do. Um, so 
I got that out and also on that motor mount uh, on this side there was a bracket that you can remove it'll actually let you move the motor around give you a little bit more movement on the motor bracket here it goes it's actually the front motor mount bolt goes down in there um, let you move that motor around a little bit more. Go ahead and take that off. And then I think the only remaining item I have over here is to take the clamp off of this remote oil fill tube, which is right here. Um, cause we're going to leave that, the, the cap over there and the hose, leave it on the bike as we pull the motor off. All right, so that's everything on the left side. And, uh, I'm going to jump over to the right side see if I can figure out the motor mounts or the motor mount over there and see if there's any other remaining items. I think there is one more ground wire that I'll have to remove. Uh, it hooks in right here below the starter, 10 millimeter bolt. So take that out and we're getting real close to picking this thing up out of here. Alright, cut the camera back on in a second. Guys, I'm pretty sure this motor mount on this right side is going to be tough to get off. Um, you see it down in there. What I'm going to try to do is uh, take a 14 millimeter on the impact and extension and go ahead and get the nut off. I believe I can get the bolt to slide out the front and then it's set up just like the other side where you can take the two 12 millimeter bolts out that run through the frame and remove the front part of the uh, motor mount and that should free the motor up. So uh, let me see if I can get that get that nut loose and get it taken off all right guys the uh, motor mount actually on that right side went pretty easy getting it back in and getting it lined up might be another matter but uh taking it out wasn't that bad pull the bolt out and pull that uh front part of that bracket off and uh see everything come out pretty good so uh now just gonna try to get everything cleared out of the way um Looks like about the only way to get this thing out of here is just to lift it straight up. This motor is very wobbly in here right now. I don't know if that's the right word for it or not, but it's the one we're going to go with. And, um, well, I've still got, I got one more plug to unplug here. That one out. And those are the coil wires. Coil wire unhooked. I think I think that is everything so nothing appears to be attached let me see if I can set this camera up and I'm gonna try one more time to film me pulling a motor out sometimes it works and sometimes it don't but we'll keep our fingers crossed that this one's gonna work guys I can't seem to get that uh, front drive shaft to slide off it'll slide but it won't slide far enough and when I pick the motor up over the motor mount it um, kind of binds up to where it won't move at all so it looks like uh, I'm gonna end up having to unbolt this front differential too which are still only two bolts so it's not hard to get to but uh, I might have to unbolt it slide it forward a little bit just to get that drive shaft off because that's really the only thing keeping the motor from lifting up right now so let me get the uh, get the drive shaft loosened up it's uh, two bolts like I said one here on the front and one up kind of on the top uh, toward the back side appear to be 17 millimeters so hopefully I can get a uh, get an impact on those and and run them off pretty quick and uh, I'll cut the camera back on in a sec yeah I'm struggling a little bit with this ended up unbolting that front diff and it was still tough to get that drive shaft off but you can see down there I finally got it off and I went ahead and pulled this uh, oil cooler off because the way this bottom line is if I need to move that motor forward which I think I am to get it out um, that line is going to get in the way so all you have to do is loosen these two or take these two 10 millimeter bolts out and uh, this one coolant line here and we already, un already unhooked the other one um, so that's all you have to do to take that out, out. I'm going to probably might, might try to take that thing apart and clean it or something so well, uh, that'll be at another time at another place all right, so now let me set the camera back up. Everything should be loose, and now it's going to be a matter of me wrestling this thing out of here. So, uh, 
Stay tuned. Alright guys, I'm going to try to pick this thing up out of here. I don't know if I can or not. Um, the way this roll bar is set up, you actually could about rig up some way to uh, to pick it up with a come along. And uh, I may end up resorting to that if uh, this doesn't work. So I'm going to just try to slide it forward as far as I can and just lift up on it. And hope, hopefully it will come out of there, but I don't know for sure. Let's see. Kind of one of them times when two people would really help out around here, but it's only me, so I gotta make do. It looks like that um, the oil fill hose back there, hard line, is hitting as I lift up. So I'm gonna take the two bolts out of it. I'll cut the camera back on. All right, guys, I got the oil tube unbolted. This thing here, two eight millimeter bolts. Hopefully, that will give us enough clearance to get this thing picked up and out of here. But I ain't 100% sure. You know what I think we're going to have to do? I don't think I can pick the thing up quite high enough. I may remove this front plastic cover here, which is partially some of the floorboard. Slide the thing out forward. I think that's how it's supposed to come out. And I believe that'll be a lot easier than trying to pick the dang thing up. Alright, back to the drawing board. Take the floorboard out. Alright guys. Got the floorboard out, about 15 screws holding the thing down. Just make sure you use the right size drill uh, bit for that thing. It's a uh, uh, number three Phillips, and that impact works pretty good. Uh, make sure you clean the heads out. If you got some mud in the bottom of them, these were pretty clean, but um, keep from stripping those heads out because you don't want to strip that out. But with that gone, it leaves a clear opening to get the motor up here into the front. Uh, still going to have to pick it up, but um, it won't be trying to squeeze it between these two frame rails here. So um, with that being said, let me see if I can get it to slide forward now. So just lift up on it. back and forth to get it to squeeze through here. Still got something kind of holding it. There we go. I rotated it up just a little bit and that'll get it out. This thing's pouring oil too. I didn't put the uh, drain plug back in it. And this torque converter will leak oil for a long time. All right, guys. I tell you, it wasn't easy, but uh, probably could save you a whole bunch of money if you did this yourself, as opposed to taking it somewhere else. But um, let's say I'll leave a link to the my uh, 680 motor rebuilds, um, my motor teardowns, and all that. They're pretty much the same as this 700, just different size cylinder, but the process is exactly the same. Um, like my video, subscribe. I'll, uh, I'm probably not going to do a teardown one on this one, like I say, because it's the same. And uh, I don't know if I'll do an install video, because goodness gracious, 
this one's already going to be long enough. All right, guys. Y'all have a good night.